Okay, good morning everyone, and today is our science. So I'm just want to build on what build on from what Miss Blacker did last week, where she was looking at different materials to see if they were magnetic or if they were electrical conductors. So I just want to sort of recap on electrical conductors and also insulators. So a thermal conductor is a material that allows energy in the form of heat to be transferred within the material. Um, so that's basically, it can let electricity pass through it. Okay. If it's a thermal insulator, then it can't let electricity pass through it. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is just going to do a, a demonstration. Here. I'm just going to look at different metals today. Because the question is, for this first session, is are all metals magnetic? And do all metals let electricity pass through them? So I want you to have a think about that. Predict, are they all magnetic? Are all metals magnetic? And are they all electrical conductors that let electricity pass through them? So have a think, and I'm going to show you some materials. Okay, so here are some materials. We've got iron, very heavy. Now, that is, we call it a tin can, or a can. But it's actually, it used to be made of tin, uh, but now it's made of aluminium. The Americans call it aluminum. And a one pence coin is actually copper plated steel. And that is made of brass and sort of paper fasteners. Um, we've got there stainless steel, that fork. Um, it's kind of famous from, I suppose, Sheffield is the place where lots of steel is made. Uh, we used to call it tin foil, but now we call it aluminium foil. My wedding ring, made of gold. And a battery. So a battery is made of many metals, uh, but mostly zinc, potassium, and manganese. Or manganese. It's like magnesium. Uh, I've got a key there which is made of steel. And I've got here different coins. So this one, it looks gold in colour, but it's apparently made of nickel. And I think nickel brass. A lot of coins are made of various types of metals for different reasons. And a 5p coin as well. So I think, are they all magnetic? Okay, so let's have a go. Let's try iron. So iron is definitely magnetic. Let's try uh, aluminum, uh, aluminium. Ah, interesting. So that is not magnetic. How about the copper plated steel? So it's got copper in and steel. So copper on the outside. Magnetic. What about the brass? Definitely magnetic. Stainless steel and stainless steel. Now, the foil, if the aluminium can wasn't magnetic, then would the foil be magnetic? No. How about the gold? So my gold ring. No. And then it's actually, I'll just show you this, it's quite interesting. So you can see it's actually quite warped. It was a circular shape to begin with, but gold can be quite a soft metal. Um, so over time, it's misshapen. And the battery, which has got zinc, potassium, and manganese. Would that be magnetic? Absolutely. So the question is, I suppose, which one of those metals, maybe all of them are magnetic, and steel. Ah, so that isn't magnetic. How about the gold coin? Well, let me go to the 5p coin first. Ah, that's magnetic. I'm not sure what that is made of, to be honest, the five pence coin. 
Now this one, that isn't. Okay, so I know that was kind of like nickel and brass, so whether that's nickel isn't magnetic. I'm not 100% on that. So, we've got all, some of, most of those are magnetic, aren't they? So, what I've done is, do Miss Blacker's last week. So, I'm just looking at magnetic, and we're going to fill that chart in. Okay, so we know iron, copper, stainless steel, the battery, uh, which had zinc, potassium, and manganese in, was magnetic. The 1P coin, uh, that was copper plated nickel. Uh, that had, that was magnetic. And the £1 coin, that wasn't magnetic. 